In this lecture, I'm going to talk about some of the critical experiments for understanding that DNA was the genetic material, and then also what structure DNA had and sort of how it works. They knew that it was either DNA or proteins that was the inherited material from other experiments. And um, most people thought it was probably going to be proteins because they already knew that they were highly diverse. They did a lot of functions in organisms. And so it sort of made sense that they would probably be the heritable factor because it was obvious for a long time that um, some factor was inherited because offspring often looked like their parents, but a little different. And so what it turns out, it was not proteins, though. It was DNA. So one of the um, critical experiments in discovery that DNA is the genetic material is Frederick Griffith's experiment in the 1920s. I believe it was 1928. So what Griffith did is that he injected these mice with different bacteria and saw if they lived or died. So there are bacteria that have these capsules around them that protect them from the immune system of the mice. We call them S strains. F S is for smooth, because they look smooth with this capsule. And when you inject these, the mice die. It's lethal. Then there is a strain of bacteria that doesn't have the capsule. It's called the R strain because it's rough looking. So this R strain doesn't kill the mice because the mouse immune system fights it off. Then he took the lethal S bacteria and killed them with heat and injected that into the mice and they didn't die, which is not surprising because, you know, you kill the bacteria, it no longer kills the mouse. Then this is the critical experiment. He took the bacteria that was dead and the bacteria that was alive but not lethal so both of these on their own don't kill the mouse, but when he put them together, now all of a sudden they did kill the mouse. And even more interestingly, when he drew the blood of the dead mouse, he saw that it had S bacteria in it, which was really odd because he injected dead S bacteria and live R. So how did the R turn into S? And that's what he discovered, that traits can be transferred from one organism, the dead S bacteria, to another organism, in this case, the living R and gives it new properties. So all of a sudden, these R bacteria turned into S bacteria, and then they killed the mouse. So this is really important because it shows that there's some factor that can be passed on. And it was an actual physical factor. So then the question is, is it DNA or protein? So Oswald Avery and a few other scientists did an experiment that was just like Griffith's, but they added molecules that chopped up um, other molecules. So enzymes, remember, catalyze reactions. So they added an enzyme that chops up DNA. And then Griffith's experiment, this last part here, it no longer worked. Basically, it didn't kill the mice anymore. They did the same experiment, and they chopped up the proteins instead. And the mice did die, so the experiment worked. So this tells them that when you chop up the DNA, it doesn't work. And when you chop up the protein, it does. So that tells us the DNA is the part that's important for passing the trait on, which should have told everybody that you know DNA was the inherited material. But people were still really skeptical, which is not a bad thing because it means you have to have more evidence than just one experiment or two experiments to come to a conclusion. So more experiments were done, including um, a classic one by Alfred Hershey and Martha Chase. So they basically used viruses to infect bacteria and saw what factor was being injected. Hershey and Chase used these viruses called bacteriophages. This is sort of like what they look like. And they were made of only two things. They're made of protein and they're made of DNA. And they know that these phages um, attached to bacteria and infect them. So all different organisms are infected by different viruses, and these are um, bacteria infecting. So what they wanted to do is they wanted to actually track what was doing the infecting. Was it the protein or was it the DNA? So basically they let the viruses infect the bacteria, and then they looked for what got inside the bacteria. 
And they did that by making DNA or protein radioactive. So when they made the DNA radioactive, which is I will um, make by the star, they let it infect the bacteria, and then they um, spun the bacteria around in solution, like liquid, really fast. All the bacteria gathers at the bottom of the test tube. And then you have like a bunch of liquid. So the liquid is the outside stuff, and this bottom, called a pellet, is the cells. So that's the bacteria themselves. And they wanted to know where did the uh, radioactivity go. So if they marked the DNA, the radioactivity, just color it in, was in the cells, but not in the liquid. If instead they did the same experiment, but instead marked the protein as radioactive, they saw that the reactivity was all in the liquid, not in the cells. So this told them that the DNA is what ended up getting into the cell, whereas the protein was left outside the cell. Which tells them that the factor that's doing the infecting is the DNA, not the protein, thus supporting the idea of DNA as the genetic material.